Hey guys, my name is Tom Ingram. Uh, Rybrook Land Rover have very kindly given me this Land Rover Defender P400 for the day for me to take to Alton Park for the next round of the British Touring Car Championship. Um, so let's go see what it's all about. So we are my first experience of the new Defender. And I've got to say, first off, I am a big fan. <laughs> the gearbox on it is so smooth. I can't go over how smooth the box on it is. It seems uh, it seems seamless. We don't seem to feel any changes at all. Um, but it's an imposing car. You feel uh, you, you <laughs> it's a big car on the road. It feels nice. I'm a big fan. Straight off the bat, real big fan of this. Nice, nice little few extras as well. We're just looking at this... Uh, enormous screen in the middle that you seem to be able to see the earth and more from. <laughs> They're good. Very nice. Very nice indeed. So we've got our next round of the British Touring Car Championship, Alton Park this weekend. Um, a circuit that is quite a unique one for British Touring Car Racing. It's a tight, twisty lap. It almost ends up being a little bit of the sort of the Monaco effect, um, whereby it's all about qualifying on Saturday um, and when we actually come to the race day it's difficult to overtake there's not a lot of overtaking going on ends up being a little bit processional so Saturday is super important and we're second in the championship at the minute so we carry 66 kilos of success ballast uh, which is going to make it fairly tricky to uh, to get Saturday done properly but never say never we'll, um, we'll hope for a good result and uh, stay out of trouble and score some big points this weekend which is exactly what we need So here we are, it's a wet Alton Park. It's very gray, it's very miserable. Um, but we are here at uh, the Friday of the British Touring Car Championship event. So um, today is pretty much just like a setup day. So the teams will go through, make sure the cars are all set up, make sure all the garages are set up. And for this weekend, we finally got hospitality back. So we've got a full array of fans coming this weekend. And we've also got a full uh, hospitality awning full of guests so it's going to be setting all that up and basically making sure that everything is ready ahead of the weekend. So on race weekends we have uh, we have all of our sponsors, we have guests, we have loads of people coming along to support us and this is our first race weekend back with having guests and having our hospitality up and running so as I say today we're just setting up so it all looks a bit of a mess at the minute whilst everything gets put together, but the flooring goes down, the decking, there'll be some outside seating here. And then inside, this is where all of our VIP guests will be. So they'll be wined and dined over the course of the race day. And then the race trucks, which are just behind you, gives you a chance to see that the guys can kind of come out of hospitality and see what's going on in there. And they can go and have a look at the cars and everything that's going on in the working area as well. Uh, so this is my uh, this is pretty much my home for the race weekend. So this is where all of my stuff lives. It's where all my kit lives. Um, so my crash helmet, my race kit. Uh, most importantly, my box of nutrition it keeps me going over the course of the day. So we have various powders and potions and all sorts of things that we have to uh, to keep us going. So this is pretty much where we'll live. We've got the office behind you where we'll spend time sort of going through video, data, and all of the sort of the analytical stuff from being out on circuit. Um, so yeah, pretty much we live here for the two days that we're, uh, that we're on track. So um, basically this is all of the communications. So everyone has their own radio, so car one, car two, um, and then on the other truck we've got all of the radios for cars three and cars four. So everyone's got a, everyone's got a radio, everyone's got a place, everyone knows whose is whose, um, everyone's headset is all marked up so everyone knows where to get it all from. They come back in here and charge after each one. Um, and there's two different types of radio that we use. They have a listen only one. Um, so that's obviously just designed for sort of guests and that so they can kind of listen into the radio comms. And then the guys that need, uh, that need sort of communications, um, I've got a little, uh, little microphone on and they can both talk and listen into to everything else that's going on. And they actually have two channels with inside of them. They've got a engineers channel that is just within the sort of the engineers and the mechanics and then they've got a car only channel. So the engineers can be talking and making decisions on their own radio channel without me having to listen in as it's going through basically. So yeah, there's quite a lot going on, but uh, it, it, important part of the race weekend is making sure these are all working absolutely spot on because I need to hear what's going on. 
So we have three trucks set up on a race weekend. Um, we've got the truck that um, Chris and myself, that's kind of our base. We've got the other side where Jack and Rick are based out of. And then the middle truck, this is where all the spares live. So all the spares for the cars from new front bumpers through to wishbones to wheels and everything else we need all lives out of this middle truck as well. Um, and then from there, we head straight into the garage. So this is the kind of the beating heart of the operation. Again, we've got um, Chris uh, and myself side. And then on the side, we've got, uh, we've got Jack and Rick. So uh, come on, let's come and have a look. So everything's set up out the back. We've got flight cases with all marked up with card numbers and this will contain all of our spares that we need from uh, dampers and, and, and such like. Um, but this is all kind of spares and really quite high end essentials. Um, and then as you come in, first thing you'll notice is bottle trolley. So all the cars have air jacks. So um, when we come in for a pit stop, they will plug the Lance into the other end of the car. So that goes into the car. They turn the handle and it fires a load of pressure through them and the car will lift up on air jacks so they can do wheel changes and setup changes and anything else they need to. Um, and if you come on in, we come into the car. So this is um, my car on the side, Chris's car over to the other side. And as I say, today is just a setup day. So they're gonna be going through making sure we've got all the setup of the car sorted for when we start testing uh, tomorrow morning. Um, and then we're doing various changes just to make sure that everything is kind of in the right area that we need it to be um, over the course of the race day. So yeah, today's a really important day to make sure it's, uh, everything's exactly as we need it to be. Um, so the cool things about these cars um, is they're pretty much all custom built to each driver. So everything from where the steering wheel sits to where the pedals are positioned to the angles of the seat and all of the internals are pretty much custom to how each driver wants the car to be set up. Um, and the mad thing is that you think these cars would to have started life as a bare lump of metal, um, or some of them even start as a road going car. Um, and compare it to the real car, there's not many components that we, uh, that we share across. Other than the shape of the dashboard, um, things like little bits of door trim, uh, mirrors, wiper blades, uh, front and rear lights, after that, there's not a lot of components that, uh, that share the position. And the other thing that you'll notice quite, quite early on is how far back we sit. If you think you know, the front door is here, the, the back of the seat is almost where the rear doors or where the rear seats would sit. Um, and also how far into the center we get. You know, we're, we're not far off sat, being sat in the middle of the car. Whole reason for weight distribution, as low as possible, as far into the center as possible, and as far into the central position of the car as possible, mainly for weight distribution, um, and ultimately, car performance. You know, the, the heaviest mass in the car, other than the engine, is this big fat lump sat here. So if we can get me as far into the middle, far down as possible, as far back, that's an ideal place to be. So then in terms of driver steering wheel, um, it's quite a bit of information going up on these and quite an important thing to, um, to also know your way around. There's actually quite a lot of stuff going on to these. So everything from um, really simple flash, so I can flash the headlights and you, you'll see it all the time on TV, but whenever we're trying to get rid of <laughs> trying to get rid of anyone in front, I can press that button and the headlights all flash really, really quickly um, to try and get people out of the way. I've got a pit lane speed limiter, so if when we're coming down pit lane, you just press and hold it and it limits the car to 30 or 40 miles an hour, depending on what the speed limit is for that weekend. Um, this is driver and this allows me to flip between different pages on the dashboard, so everything from um, engine temperatures through to um, brake pressures to roll and everything else like that, I've got all the information at the fingertips to be able to swipe through. Um, radio fairly self-explanatory, we actually have it on both sides, uh, depending on if we're pulling a gear, we can open the radio with our right hand, if not we can open it with our left hand, so it doesn't, we can choose either one for those. Um, various different engine maps that we have to be able to play with, um, we only have four engine maps that we can choose, um, map four tends to be a cool down map that we, that we tend to use. And then on the other side we've got a hybrid button, so this is actually for, for, the, um, for next year, so this is a new generation steering wheel that we'll actually be using for when the hybrid car comes out. So we'll have hybrid maps down the bottom here, and we've also got a hybrid boost button that will sit up at the top here. Push to pass map, and again, that'll be used for various deployment of engine maps that we use off the start line. A brake button, which is effectively a handbrake and a line lock system, so we can lock the pressure that we've built up into the, uh, into the front or the rear wheels, depending on where you've got yours set up. Hold it, and it will lock everything into place so you can get a really good launch. Radio button that we've spoken about, and everything's on a quick release in case we need to jump out the car in a hurry. And that is pretty much the steering wheel.
So over here, this is in our tyre emporium. So this is where um, all of our race tyres, spare tyres will live um, and basically get worked on and make sure that they're in the best place possible. So if we go over and have a look, um, so we've got uh, we've got our wet tyres just over here. So these are a, a used set of wet tyres um, that we might have used at a test or anything else like that. Um, and then we've got slick tyres and everything else like that. So see over being carryover tyres. So we can use various sets of tyres over a race weekend. We'll obviously have new, we'll have carryover tyres. These are a particular carryover set of tyres that we'll use pretty much through practice. We might change them over for free practice two. We might use them in the race. Um, basically, it's another set of tyres that we use, and naturally, you try to use the best set of carryover tyres possible. So they will probably have come from the previous rounds, um, and they pretty much live in there. So everything else that goes on in here, um, all the tyres will get um, will get weights. They'll get balanced. So they all have little uh, little weights. So now you'll see these on your road cars. They tend to be a little bit more hidden. They tend to be on the inside. So just in case we have any slightly buckled wheels or slightly unbalanced wheels, they'll go off to the guys and girls at Goodyear Tyres, where they'll get thrown over their machine, they'll put all the weights on, um, and then we just make sure they're nice and clean um, and they're prepared, ready to go. Now, no one's doing anything here at the moment, but one of the things you will notice is how clean these tyres actually are. Now, considering these are a used set of tyres, what they do after the car's been on circuit is they'll take all of the excess rubber off them so we can get back down to a nice smooth tyre to make sure it's, it's, it's no bumps, make sure there's no cuts in the tyre, and we can see right down to where we're actually going to be using all of the grip of the tyre. So it all gets cleaned off and it's a heat gun with pretty much a big blade on it and it takes all of the excess rubber off. Like I say, we've got no tyres that are being done here at the weekend because they're already done, we've not been on circuit yet. But that's a big operation that goes on over the course of the whole day. And that will show us all the life of the tyre. We can see if there's any little cuts, any little nicks in it. And we can also tend to get a little bit of a snapshot to see where we're wearing the tyre, if it's using a, an outside, an inside, a middle too much. And it gives us a really nice snapshot to basically just to see how the tyre's looking. So there we go, thank you very much for joining me on the Friday of our Alton Park race weekend. It's gonna be a busy day, so I'm gonna to have to crack on uh, and I'm gonna leave you to it. So uh, thank you for joining me and I'll catch you soon.